we are live. Uh, welcome to this latest episode of Totally Unscripted. My name is Martin Hoxie, and uh, uh, I'm joined by our regular Steve Webster. Hi, Steve. Hello. And um, so in this episode, we're going to actually explore uh, a bit about Google Apps Script in the enterprise. So um, there's lots, there, you know, there's a very good Google Apps Script community, um, but sometimes it can be quite hard to, you know, find out how the enterprise um, are using G Suite, how they're using Google Apps Script, just because of the confidentiality kind of aspect of it all. So we're delighted to have uh, Max Brower from uh, BuzzFeed. Hi, Max. Hey, everyone. So um, Max, uh, you you are uh, people at analytics at BuzzFeed, or for yes. older people like me, uh, HR, human yep. resources. Um, so as well as that, you've also uh, got a Google Developer Expert uh, hat on as well. So it, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm excited oh. to be here. Uh, so for those not familiar with um, BuzzFeed, can you just give us kind of an overview of um, who BuzzFeed are? What do they do? Yeah. I mean, it feels like a lot of companies at once, but at the end of the day, we are the, one of the largest um, online digital media um, entities or enterprises. And so we have a pretty long history, uh, way before me, of posting some of the most shareable and identifiable content on the web. Um, and today, you know, we're still buzzfeed.com website, but we're also made up by a pretty huge portfolio of brands like Tasty. So it's the world's largest Facebook page and it's all of the top down recipe videos um, and so many more. That's just one example. So what kind of uh, size of organization uh, are we talking about with BuzzFeed? Um, 1,000 to 1,100, roughly. And so, we're broken out across the world. So um, over 10 offices, largely in the United States, but a lot of different right. international areas, such as you know from Brazil to the UK to Japan and so on. And I guess G Suite is kind of a, a staple of what you do. Or you know, a staple tool within BuzzFeed. Yes, I would say our our stack, if you will, is we do build a lot of tools in house. But as a company, we're on G Suite for enterprise. Um, we've adopted Slack for enterprise in the last few years for our instant messaging and chat. Um, and those are the two main tools that almost every employee is you know utilizing. And so, where where does your uh, Google Apps Script story start? Does it start? Uh, at BuzzFeed, or is it something that you were working with um, before joining BuzzFeed? I would say it begins, it really begins with Visual Basic. It begins right. with, um, I started my career at Nielsen, um, and at Nielsen we were a Microsoft Office shop, so to speak. Um, but I always loved automation, and I think maybe that even begins with like hacking video games on the internet to you know run scripts for you. I think that's really the true beginning. Um, so I showed up at Nielsen right away and started trying to both train people in Excel and train people in Visual Basic to automate a lot of our processes. Um, I think some of the best examples of that were building entire products where you would just hit a macro and create you know, an entire sellable PowerPoint. Uh, so those were the early beginnings. And I think what was fun for me was at BuzzFeed, I showed up and did have a panic of, of am I supposed to be using Excel or just going straight into Sheets? And I really did go back and forth for a few weeks. Um, and then I committed full on. And so I've been clean and sober from office <laughs> for two and a half years now. Um, and I started teaching a course called How I Learned to Stop Hating and Love Google Sheets. So that was the beginning of sort of the switch over in the last few years. And um, in terms of, you mentioned automation there. Um, it, could you give us some examples of um, you, you, know, I, you know, the sort of things that you're, you're doing in BuzzFeed with Google Apps Group? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll answer that and also answer the origin at first, because I think the beginning of me really using Apps Script and something that I think is still an untapped potential for almost every company, because I'm sure lots of um, internal teams and people teams do this, is most of my initial projects had to basically do with splitting up your data into pieces based on management hierarchies and then spreading it out, doing something with it across the org and then pulling it back together. So my very first major app script project that taught me to value it um, was a script I made called The Vacuum. And the concept was if you're a people team, one of the things you have to do, probably every people team has to do, 
is compensation processes. So you have to take, take sensitive information and chop it up into pieces because there are different managers who have to make decisions, um, send that out across your organization, and then take their nominations and re-centralize them. So my very first pieces of app script were projects that sort of did that automatically. So helped you understand like, this is the data you'll be served based on your management chain in Sheets. Um, and then took all of the manager's macro recommendations and centralized them back into a master sheet, which enables us to both work a lot quicker, uh, make real-time diversity and inclusion analyses on top of the data and so on. And I think it was a lot profoundly different than what used to happen, which is someone copy pasting out of 400 spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty profound time savings. It sounds like a, a familiar story. Was there much, you know, were you kind of on a journey of self discovery with AppScript or were there other people at Buzzfeed that were already doing stuff with script? Um, I mean, I think what I loved about it, the reason I leaned into G Suite and AppScript as a whole were that it's basically, you know, it's founded on top of JavaScript. So I was comp pretty much alone in app scripting at first, but did have a wonderful tech team um, and even some external resources and friends who I could chat and I could send them app script. And as JavaScript professionals, they were able to totally advise me really well. So I definitely did not do it alone. Um, I think my biggest career secret is having a Slack workspace of external friends who are engineers who can take my questions here and there. That's a a very intelligent way of working. And I think, it, you know, it's, um, I think for a lot of people as well, that's generally how, how they um, get stuff done is um, if you don't know, knowing the right people can really help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think I, I should just add that um, afterwards, we ended up sort of spreading the gospel of AppScript a bit. And now, and I, I'm sure we'll talk about this later, but I do have some peers in other operations departments who are either requesting projects from us as, as if we were engineers or building their own projects um, that are really complicated and really pushing BuzzFeed. Um, I, I think my favorite compliment that I ever got was somebody who was a vendor for a piece of software just said, we can't really seem to sell you guys anything because you're just very innovative and we can't make a product that you haven't built yourself. So I think that to me was when I started to feel like we were really um, advanced with this app script universe. You're, you're actually kind of answering a question that I had for you sure. too, about uh, in your enterprise, you actually have like an application department of app script gurus, but it sounds mm -hmm. like more decentralized. Well, I think what happens is we have a centralized tech team and you know, those engineers have a lot, like all of their own infrastructure. So they're building, um, they're building like off of a very major code base and building a lot of applications and we turn to them for help. But most of our app script projects really are run you know, out of the proverbial garage, like they're just our accounts, um, different people who know how to use app script, kind of lending each other um, help and, and engineering on each other's computers and, and local machines. Nice. Do you, is, is, do you have any uh, sustainability concerns, you know, people disappearing and, and taking scripts with them or, um, is it very much tied to the individual? So the individual brings a set of qualities and that might include some scripts that can help get things done. Yeah, um, I the genuine answer is just yes, it is a concern. Um, it's, not a, it's not a totally mm -hmm. solved problem. And I think, you know, for people listening who are interested in app script, you know, I talked to my manager about this. We reminisced about this yesterday. Um, I really definitely scared a lot of people because they said, no matter how cool what you're building is, like if we have no idea what you're doing, we're going to be very afraid to use it and rely on it. So um, I really learned a lot from that lesson. I think what has been helpful is being in where I think my favorite thing about BuzzFeed is it's a very inclusive company across teams. So what happens is even if I were to say, you know, um, you know, the person who owns the script isn't going to be around to work with it anymore, you can still point to a handful of people with the willingness and expertise to chip in and, and be there as backup and support, even if it's not their core function or role. And is there, do you have a preference when you're developing your script? So obviously there's quite a few choices in terms of, you know, you can do container bound scripts or you can do standalone or add-ons. Is there a particular preference that you have when you're developing stuff? Yeah, you're making me think, make me wonder if my answer is 
is is a novice answer. Um, I feel like, <laughs> no, because I would actually be curious to hear more about that. Like I have, um, when I do intend to make something publishable as an add-on, I know that the best practices I'm, I see are to make them standalone. But I would say with, there's probably a good reason we're often bound to sheets is very common for us. Um, and I think it's the nature of a lot of the times we are walking in on other people's work who are learning how to engage us as app script engineers. So a really good example might be um, when our business operations team came to us, you know, they already had a pretty massive database and spreadsheet form um, and they wanted us to build automation on top of it. So without, you know, kicking them out and putting them in some other domain or making them work somewhere else, we built scripts into their um, existing documents. So I think it's very often that we're we're sort of stepping into other people's universe and making a leaving minimal confusion behind by staying attached to them. That sounds very similar to my own experience. Mm. Uh, Steve, uh, do you, you know you obviously you work as a, a consultant and developer for businesses? Do you see any particular trends your, yourself? Um. I'm surprised of how many people, I mean, on one hand, you want to leverage your G Suite investment. Mm -hmm. You know, people have been trained on it, they're comfortable with it, and throw in some automation and everyone's, everyone's happy. But then there's the scaling thing mm -hmm. and the complexity. And the most extreme case I've seen is a recent client where they said, I want to use spreadsheets for people on site at locations. Some of them may be using Chromebooks or like an iPad. Well, when you get into the iPad, you're talking about, about the mobile version of spreadsheets, which a little different than the desktop browser, right? Mm. So they got creative to say, well, I don't have a custom menu. I really don't have a luxury of an add-on. Well, let me create a drop-down um, validation within a cell and create an on-edit trigger. Mm -hmm. cool. I'll select submit. It fires off the trigger from an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so... And then the other th thing I wanted to comment on since you asked was mm -hmm. in this case, we're talking about 150 spreadsheets with the same source code uh, <laughs> contained. And so recently we said, well, we inherited this for the client, right? And we said, well, let's leverage Google Scrap, Google <laughs> Script API to kind of push everything out. Um, so we use a combination of um, repositories, either Bitbucket or GitHub, and kind of manage the chaos. So, Max, have you leveraged any repositories or just Google Drive? Um, the truth is it's rare. I think we've we've posted to GitHub just almost for posterity and safekeeping, um, mm. but not really for actively developing things. It's quite a, a cool model, I think, Steve, that you, you, you're you um, just to... Just to recap that, so you're using the Google Apps Script API to basically go out to container brand scripts and update this, the code in there? Correct. So yeah. there's a nice plugin for the uh, app, uh, the script editor, right, that can work with GitHub or Bitbucket on a per project, right? Uh, but when you think about the 150 separate spreadsheets, that means I have to open up 150 spreadsheets, go into script editor and pull, right? Yeah. But Instead of that, we say, okay, let's write a script that loops through these spreadsheets and leverage, uh, I guess it's the uh, script ID, you know, like file, you know, project script ID, and that's what it runs on. And then you can push everything out in a matter of seconds, really. Yeah, I like hearing this story too, because I think something I could ask for more of from the product is there really are a lot of ways to do everything. Um, I have a lot of great successes where I make a button and a drop down. And I think the typical person really likes that. Making an add on is really the coolest and feels the most secure. And yet um, it can be hard to train people through that flow. Like even when I send people, you know, here's how you install this add on links, a lot of them just get frustrated and stop. Mm -hmm. um, or you just forget that an add on is following every sheet you go to. I think it almost makes people use it less as opposed to when you're container bound and they know to log into a master spreadsheet and click a button. Um, I also spent a lot of time um, publishing as web apps, which feels like this really cool secret that I also don't see promoted quite a lot. Um, but it's a very good way for me to uh, deal with security issues, right? Because I can serve people only select data off of a master spreadsheet 
which is like the biggest people operations quest in, that I can think of. So with that, um, you're, you're basically using whoever's, so you're in a G Suite domain and you're able to tap into the, the identity of that person uh, mm -hmm. within your web app and then serve back what you need. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Google Sheets is one of my favorite pieces of software in the world. And the one thing it's really bad at is a lot of people needing to deal with the source of truth. Um, mm. It's the simplest thing, like a bunch of people just log in and hit the filter button and destroy other people's work. And it's such a funny, curious thing that even though there have been moves to solve it, like filter views, they just don't seem to take uh, hold. So I feel like that's an interesting unsolved problem. Mm. Um, and it's the main reason I publish things as web apps. Do you find as well um, with, you know, container bound scripts, I, I, do you find uh, opposed to add-ons where, you know, the, one of the overheads with an add-on is you've got, you got to create a lot of the, the interface. Is, is yeah. that one of the factors that, you know, you're trying to keep it simple? Yeah, um, I would love, I've seen, you know, people out there in our world developing easier ways to build interfaces. Um, I think that's like maybe the next skill up for me. Like I would love to have an easier time doing that. Uh, I've, I've become very comfortable with little sidebars, but I will confess that I, I kind of built a scaffold that works for me and has some good CSS libraries loaded up. And I'm mostly just copy pasting that scaffold yeah. around throughout my projects. It would be nicer to um, have those, have like that toolkit good to go of like just dropping in nice material design UI items. Um, but I am very, very much about Flash, so I do put a lot of effort. Flash isn't flashing; it's not the software. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do really like put a lot, probably way too much time into my typography and my buttons looking good. So it would be nice for that to get easier. Well, that that also reminds me of something. If I may interrupt, Martin, mm -hmm. um, that's right. The tool App Maker, right, where yeah. drag and drop the UI, and that also reminds me of a recent Google Next talk with with Eric and. Uh, forget the other person's name, where they said, hey, here's the scaling, right? Prototype uh, spreadsheets and then maybe scale to uh, app maker. Has that been considered or used at BuzzFeed? I really do. I got the app maker beta on like day one. And I think that's the problem is that I checked it out back then and haven't checked back right. in. Um, so it's very likely that it's become the kind of thing I should really lean into. Um, my only, and I, I had actually talked to the PMs on that team and I think I had said that at the time, my issue was just that when you're really coming at this from like a non-computer science background, I think sometimes the documents will take for granted that dealing with concepts like what's your client side work and what's your server side work are really jargon heavy mm -hmm. and kind of hard to access. So I stayed in a comfort zone, but I do think it would be great to break into AppMaker. Um, it sounds like the perfect solution to a lot of big problems. Do you, it's one of your uh, hesitations for going into App Maker. Obviously, now it's there, there was options for databasing with App Maker. I think they were called Drive Tables mm -hmm. uh, available in the beta, but they got dropped, and so Cloud SQL was oh uh, interesting was the kind of you know go to database backend. It sounds like you're in a, a very much a Google Sheets. How still and going full database is that one of the things that putting you off? Um, now you're reminding me. I mean, I no, I, I am so into the idea. The minute I heard that concept, um, I thought it was brilliant of like being able to sort of go directly to data that just sort of is in Drive. Because I'll say like, um, if you if we end up talking about some of my projects like face to a name later, I mean, I do some really crazy hacky things. Like I think right now I pull data out of a spreadsheet and then write it to a JSON file and then upload it into Drive every night just to sort of have like my own imaginary drive table of data. Um, I do a lot of work to kind of, uh, a lot of work for workarounds. And I think it would be great to break free from spreadsheets. But I also should point out that I don't see it as a bad thing. And I think it really helps the typical person mm -hmm. get I think really the fact that your spreadsheets become a backend is what makes this tool something that um, a lot of non-coders get really into and excited about. So you mentioned there you, you've got a couple of uh, projects. Um, are any any in particular you, you can point people to? I know you're on Medium as well. Yeah. You do post stuff there. 
uh, any particular popular ones or ones that are personal favorites of yours? Yeah, um, I mentioned face to a name because I think that was my favorite. Um, somebody today said that we broke Hack Week last year because it was fun showing up as a HR person to a company's technology Hack Week and sweeping the award show. Um, we built a tool. <laughs> we built a tool called Face to a Name. Um, just to start with the why, I think we realized that there was an organizational difficulty at almost any company, which is no matter how many times you write someone's name, like you know, if you say congrats, Martin, um, everyone else in the org doesn't really know that person and doesn't know how to reach out to them or why to reach out to them. You kind of just see their name floating around. So yeah. to quite literally put a face to a name, we built a pretty complicated, but you know, complicated, but I think this was like a three-day project, which is another great thing about AppScript. Um, project and it was primarily a gmail add-on and a slack app and what the tool did was so i had mentioned earlier that i was hosting jason in, in drive it's a file of every single employee's name basically and the gmail add-on um, accesses that and then whenever you read an email in the company you can pop open a sidebar and the app is looking for names of fellow employees so what happens is for every single hit in the form of an employee name you then are sending a request to our internal BuzzFeed servers where we have what's called the Teams API, which is a lot of information that we store about people um, for use on the website. So this is actually kind of stealing some infrastructure that's used right. on BuzzFeed.com to credit people, to give people like a picture and their, yeah. you know, who they are. So we hit that and then we return a card in the Gmail add-on that lets you learn something about these people. So what starts off as, you know, just little names, pieces of text, you then get to see this full color side menu. It's kind of like an internal Facebook, right? Where you click on a person. So if you click on me, you'll see a picture of my face. You'll see where I, what office I'm in. If you just want to know if I'm in your local office, but then you'll also, um, we built a handler that can be, can patch your file from Slack. So from Slack, I could say that I want to upload my fun fact, for example, or something about me or what to write me about. And I can post that to the Teams API. So then what you end up with is something that's a lot richer than an HR system or a typical Google directory or Slack directory. Um, and it's somewhat automatic in that it's built off of whoever you're seeing in an email or having a conversation with. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, um, I've, I've seen similar pro uh, uh, products like Reportive do. No. Well, obviously, um, it sounds like you're, you know, you're using the, the data you've already got in your organization and uh, pulling that in. Were there any particular uh, kind of real headaches with that project or did it all come together quite easily? It's a good question. I mean, it definitely required um, working with real engineers. So with developers in our company, I think that was the goal is the more we've been having these conversations about reliability of scripts. And my goal was let's do things the real way. So instead of a container bound piece of app script, let me product manage and get engineers to build something on our very well supported infrastructure. So I was glad to do that and to have more um, support around the product. And I built the, the Gmail add on. Um, so it took a lot of people and it's definitely hard when you have a bug or something to fix up. Um, I would say that, you know, my recollection of trying to do a Gmail add on when it was brand new was very tough because you couldn't really Google for most of your problems. Right. Um, you could not find a lot of history of people dealing with the same things. Building a card was a fairly complex ask at the time. And I think I was doing the the crazy JSON names upload because I couldn't successfully just kick call the spreadsheet service from inside of the add-on. Mm. Um, so I was really hacking away to make make it all work. So you mentioned the, the card service there. Mm -hmm. It seems to be becoming the norm in terms of uh, uh, G Suite stuff to, you know, we obviously have um, Hangouts Chat has gone card. Um, and I think there's talk at Next of um, and perhaps even we've had someone on the show talk about um, a, an eventual move to, to uh, a card system for, mm -hmm. for everything. So, uh, but it, that has, sounds like a really impressive project and I can understand why you you won <laughs> lots of awards for it. Yeah. I mean, more seriously, the best outcome was that the next step was um, I built the trust with my head of IT 
to do a domain-wide installation. So whereas that used to be kind of like right. a circus of me sending around this link to download it, we ended up just having it become part of BuzzFeed's G Suite setup. So are you finding um, more people within BuzzFeed or it sounds like you're the custodian of a, a lot of Google, Google Apps Script expertise or are you finding more people are approaching you asking you to do kind of different projects or outside uh, people yeah. analytics or? Yeah, big time. Um, I mean, probably the coolest, I do have one peer who does this as much as I do. Um, and Alexis is in the business operations team. And a really great organizational idea, I think, was um, her and I and someone from the data science team were placed on a business intelligence squad. So sort of like a cross-functional squad that would have a stand up to meet about ideas that we could use to across departments. Um, probably the most amazing thing we built there that I always think is really great to see. Um, it wasn't my idea, but something I engineered a lot on was we completely rethought the way that you run a sales team um, by building an integration wherein um, our CRM will send data to, to a spreadsheet. So we'll end up with kind of like a um, entire spreadsheet of sales opportunities. And then we built a very complicated system where we are routing all of those as tickets through various Slack bots. So the experience of being a seller becomes like, you know, for example, an opportunity comes in and next thing you know, you're on a specialized channel with just you and the right people and the right people who are gonna resource that opportunity. Uh, we really sped up the, the way in which um, various business teams work together. And that was another good cross-functional project also because it was like Slack and uh, Booster, the CRM service. In terms, are, are there other um, enterprise companies that you're aware of that are, are using AppScript, you know, at, you within kind of the the people analytics domain, or you know, you going out and presenting some of this stuff and finding there are more people in other organizations uh, approaching it similarly. I'm shocked that I haven't. I mean, the answer is mm -hmm. no. This feel this still feels like my big secret that I'm waiting to get out there. And <laughs> the the very interesting thing for me has been, and you know, I, I I can say I'm sure they're out there, but I can tell you unequivocally, like I've given. Um, my most of my for a couple of years, my talks that I gave at conferences were called part human, part machine. And it was about right. how we, how we build bots that sort of keep human resources flowing. And most people would say, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds pretty cool. Um, so I never really got a lot of takers on building those things with me. What I have noticed that's great is since I launched the Medium blog, the traffic is in the thousands every week. So someone out there is reading about how to use AppScript in a pretty basic way. Yeah. Um, so it's resonating, but I have not actually met someone in real life or in the wild who has just told me that they're doing this. <laughs> right. That's a slightly depressing. <laughs> it's an opportunity, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, Steve, uh, you know, you're obviously working in this space across organizations. Is, is it uh, a similar story that you're encountering? Well, actually, I was going to comment. We had Cleo on a totally unscripted yeah. show. And I was just going to mention this, this neat concept of I have data in some database and I can have a conversation with natural language to mm -hmm. talk to the data. That's kind of like mind blowing when you think of think about yes. it that way, yeah. right? And, uh, and I was going to ask you, uh, Max, about uh, can you share any deep dive um, uh, experiences with machine learning uh, stuff like sediment analysis stuff? Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, I've had I've had a lot of attempts, and I would say a lot of them ended up being backburnered. Um, some, what, some of the ones that come to mind as most exciting were um, I used Google's natural language library to try to analyze our survey comments, and my hope was that um, for three thousand or so pieces of text, I would be able to organize them by their you know sentiment and their magnitude. So that was a really great endeavor and a successful one in that I was able to um, accomplish it. But I would say that um, I ended up questioning the validity of the whole exercise because what I sort of found, and this is sort of like kind of a half joke, is that you could almost just sort comments by length and you would end up with a similar analysis. You could just see like, well, if someone was 
high on the magnitude of, uh, you know, high on the magnitude scale is because they had a lot to say. Um, so I succeeded in getting that data set up that way, but I don't think we ever touted it as a big solution that we needed. That's interesting because I was thinking, as you said mm -hmm. that, you could say, well, I want to get, is it positive or negative? And then I want to focus on the positives, perhaps, and not so much the negatives, regardless of the length. <laughs> yeah, but that's also the thing is that I think a lot of the people, it might just be, you know, the specific construct for us is interesting because in our world, if you're writing a lot, you're probably writing constructive feedback. So there's, there's a negative bias towards it. Um, and then you also tend to see a lot of people writing very, I think the biggest issue for me was you would really have to start breaking up comments into fragments um, and into pieces because there was a lot of, you know, I feel great about this, but bad about this. So you would end up with a very mixed um, sentiment that would average to zero. I think that was one of the initial troubles that I found in the exercise. Interesting, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to do more. I think there's also, um, you know, a degree to which when something gets very machine learning heavy, that's precisely when we step out of these Google Drive tools. Um, that's usually what brings me to working with a, a Python mentor on like a Python project in Terminal. So I think it'll be cool to see the convergence of, I can just do all of that in Drive without thinking twice. There was actually, um, I think it was next, 2018, I'll just put a link in the, the YouTube chat to, uh, it was Alicia Williams, um, who was um, doing natural language processing Google Sheets. Um, I think she was using Airbnb yeah. reviews. So my memory of that session was that she was tackling it in, in the way that you were describing in terms of um, breaking it down, uh, uh, you know, so you're not looking at big chunks of text, you're looking at smaller chunks of text. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think as well with the, I think Google keep, realized as well that there there is a big world of um, enterprise users that are, that are similar to you that um, operate a lot around uh, Google Sheets and you know yeah. the, the big query data connectors that they've announced. I think um, will hopefully give us yeah. more tools for us to um, do this sort of thing. Yeah, I think um, just a quick addition to that, like. What always separated me from our core data science team, and the reason that I do think there's a use for this in Sheets, is like with the machine learning example I just described, or the natural language uh, exercise, my, my output goal was a sheet. I just wanted yeah. to say, here's column one, and then let me append this really interesting number that's column two. Whereas I would, I would always find and kind of be surprised that the, the, the data engineers would kind of hate me because it wasn't in their expertise to be thinking about like CSVs and how do I just create this little mm -hmm. spreadsheet because they tend to, you know, be productionizing their data in different ways and making visuals and just running it through systems. So what to me seemed like, isn't this the easiest task? I just want to take column one and add column two to it um, was actually kind of a pain for to get mentorship on. I thought that was interesting. And mm -hmm. I think that's such a popular use case of the future. Someone just wants their spreadsheet to have a cool machine learning component that We'll have to eventually get there. Uh, are there other barriers um, to adoption that you're seeing within BuzzFeed? Yeah, I mean the biggest ones. I mean, it's a question of it's a question of what um, adopting what. I think I'm still trying to work mm. on getting people out of Excel. Um, <laughs> I'm always. I, I would say the main barrier there. There's sort of an issue where no matter how tech forward your company is, um, I, what I notice is that operations people get sent a lot of. CSVs in the mail. Um, so if you're in HR, probably 10 times a day, someone is sending you an extract from some system or some benefit system or some payroll system as a CSV. And I try to sort of preach to people or teach them how easy it can be to get that up into Drive and work with it as a Google yeah. Sheet. But it's what I notice, you know, it's a lot easier for the typical user to just double click those and be working offline. Yeah. So that's definitely one. And then the other is just, um, you know, I'm still trying to crack this code of this sort of pedagogical code of how do you get people to care? Um, you know, I came from an analyst background. So I used to teach analysts how to be really great at sheets. And those people, you know, are there at work to learn these sort of skills. And the question becomes when you see someone who's, you know, an HR specialist, for example, 
and you know they're putting a lot of time into spreadsheet work, how do you convince them that they should want to be faster and that they should want to automate and that they should sort of consider this universe at all? I think I'm trying to learn how to open people's eyes to that a bit more. You mentioned that Nielsen, um, that it sounds like you were doing Excel training. Mm -hmm. um, are you doing something similar at BuzzFeed in terms of Google Sheets and App Script? Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, it's funny, it's all profoundly different because the Nielsen course um, was called Page Down for What? and was very much about navigating the keyboard for shortcuts. Um, and with Google Sheets, I think what we aim to do is kind of what I just described. I think our training that I, I worked on with someone is meant to um, shock and awe people. So we try to lead right. off with the most Google Sheets only formulas like import range um, and query function to get someone like to really see the excitement of what you could do. And I think that's been hard too, because it's kind of like, um, you take for granted that if someone is not a power user of computers, that's like a hard ask. Yeah, and then I suppose, you know, even even with uh, built-in functions, you, you start using query, which is incredibly powerful, but you mm -hmm. got then introduce people to SQL. Yep. And, and then they get really frustrated when they've, they've missed a comma. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree. I mean, I can, um, I'll tease what I kind of hope to release because I think it's a, to me, it strikes me as an, a good insight, which is that I tried teaching import range and realized that it just was really hard for people to wrap their heads around. Um, yeah. so one of the things I have in development is like an import range helper um, that makes it more of a, of a UI based exercise to import from another sheet. And I actually start using it locally all the time because half of my work, half the work I do is referencing some master spreadsheets with import range. Like, so I wanted a tool that sort of is like the vigilante product edition that I wish I could see in sheets. So hopefully I'll get that out there soon. So for that, are, so is that, are you working on that as a, an add-on or? Yeah. Uh, so it just kind of, helps people build what, what they're uh, what they're trying to get in a, a more visual way, I guess? Yeah, a more visual way to sort of navigate your drive and uh, generate those import range statements without the pain of typos that make it yeah. hard. <laughs> that actually reminds me, uh, um, one, of, one of the add-ons that I helped to write was uh, text G Blaster, bulk text messaging from a spreadsheet. Just cool. for US, just for U.S. and Canada, and for some reason, import range was not compatible with the, the way we're using the spreadsheet. So I actually created an option on the right side to add on to say our customized import range. Type in the URL, the sheet name, and blah blah blah, and even a remember me thing. So that was yeah. interesting. Yeah, I have your product shot up now. It looks great. Well, it's funny because um, you know back when I was just starting out in Google Sheets and App Scripts, there was uh, a guy, uh, Tony Hurst, who, as part of the um, Google Visualization API, it's basically using the same query, um, SQL query kind of language. And um, he just made a very simple generator that, you know, once you start putting in your, mm -hmm. your, your spreadsheet key, it would start, you know, pulling in column names and just making it easier to pull things in. And, Mm. Build build a query because when you look at the URL for these sorts of things, it's um, it gets all encoded as well, so it just becomes a, a complete mess. Yeah, I can see the need. So, are are there? Uh, I'm conscious of time. But, uh, are there uh, any other projects that you're particularly excited about or working on, or um, aspects of, that have been announced about app scripts recently that you're raring to get, get into? Yeah, um, I would say in the general, I mean, I have actually not, I would, I would like to, you know, take some of this work public. I mean, in general, I'm excited to kind of push myself to build something that you can actually deliver as a product to any user. So I would love to get myself in the broader app store. I've always sort of been in this comfort zone of publishing okay. internal only. Um, and, you know, maybe something I'll pose as a question to, to anyone for later is, you know, just to kind of, I, I would love to learn more about how people get themselves up and running with putting things into the marketplace. Because I think one of the problems I have is 
the minute you click, you know, when you click publish as a web app, you have such a great time just hitting publish and then you get a link and it's such a magical <laughs> workflow. It's so easy. And then when you hit publish as add on, you're suddenly asked to give, you know, 20 descriptions that you don't want to give and upload. I mean, I spend more time making fake screenshots than I do of the <laughs> add on. So I think to kind of like get a comfort level with I'm going to post this to the public um, would be a really great thing. Um, I would love to make some of these tools for the, the typical people ops person that are really directed towards them. Um, some of the things I do have in development are about like sort of building folder hierarchy so you can post, um, generate statements directly into folders. Um, for people like me who work with survey data, um, I have a post on Medium that I'm gonna try to make into a product about how we sort of turn a bunch of spreadsheet of text strings into a really readable Google Doc, you know, that your executives can print out and hold in their hands. Um, so I would like to see this stuff sort of scale and, and reach the world so that, you know, other people can kind of see what I do about app script. There is a slight difference though. Um, mm -hmm. when you're within the domain, Google doesn't care about restricted scopes. I know. <laughs> but when you go outside, uh, then it becomes an, a, a, an opportunity to solve. <laughs> Scare me real. Yeah. We we touched on this uh, in the last show with Eric. So but it sounds like maybe we need Steve to kind of revisit the whole add-on publishing journey and just because there, there are a number of aspects, you know, to consider there's GDPR mm -hmm. headaches as well or opportunities, or <laughs> however you want to classify them. Um, so maybe we need to do that. Um, uh, so, yeah. But we look forward, Max. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share sure. some of the things that you've been doing on uh, within BuzzFeed. And um, we'll post links to your medium as well so that people can um, keep tabs on you. Uh, and we'll include a link as well to your various social media profiles so people can um, keep tabs and start uh, hopefully gaining inspiration uh, ideas from what you do. Um, so thanks for taking the time for joining us. Of course, thanks for having me. And I hope that anyone listening um, reaches out with questions because I, I thrive on these questions about App Script. I love to answer them. That's what we love to hear. And uh, thanks, Steve, as well, for your, your company and contributions. And uh, thanks for everyone for uh, tuning in. And we'll be back on there very soon. Thanks very much. Thanks.